All right, so we're gonna open a new document here and we're going to import a couple of images from Pixabay. One is Denver, Colorado, where the story of black does take place. And another one is going to be this generic tree line that I also found on Pixabay. So we're gonna to try to line up the two so we can create one unique and complete horizon. I'll show you how I'm doing that here in a minute. Um, I'm just masking out the grass from Denver and replacing it with the grass from the forest, like so. That way we can have one continuous line of sight. Um, to fix kind of the patchiness, I'm just rubber stamp tolling some stuff back in and some more masks. It doesn't have to be perfect because we will be changing this significantly as we go. It just has to look close enough to be believable. Now I am just messing with the colors so I can get the sky to look fairly close to the sky on the left. Um, I'm not worrying about what it does to the buildings right now or the trees, I just want that blue sky color. Um, I'm masking back out some of the sky so I can make the clouds match a little bit and more Denver match a little because I just want it to affect the blue. And now I'm working on the tree line and trying to make it look just the same kind of green as the left. Again, I'm masking the sky back out so it only affects the grass and the trees. I'm blurring kind of the lines here and there with more masks and now we've got one continuous line of sight. Um, once we're done with that, we're actually going to make the canvas a little bit taller and we're going to stretch the image so it's a square. We're going to distort, distort it with the polar coordinates. Um, if you've ever seen those tutorials about tiny planets on Photoshop, how to make these tiny planets, it's the same tutorial, it's just inverted from what they tell you to do. Um, and then you make more of a tiny sky than a tiny planet. But it's the exact same tutorial, you can look it up. Um, it's very easy to follow. We're actually going to mask the sky out though because we will not be using it. Um, we're just going to keep some of the Denver mountains in the back and that's about it. Instead we're going to replace it with this stormy looking sky because um, we want a little bit more of a whimsical kind of fantasy look. We want to be able to control all of that. So what I'm just doing is spinning um, the sky into kind of the swirl with the distort tools and filling the center with this new stormy dark sky. I'm masking out anything that I don't want to use and I'm going to adjust some of the brightness so it will fit together a little bit more realistically. Now I'm going to import that uh, tree line back in again and just take the grass and I'm going to warp it around kind of the circle here so we don't get that strange little razory look we've got on the corners. We're just going to mask that out to make it one solid grass piece. And we're going to place the circle a little bit more in the center. Now we're going to make this royal pink because in the book, if you have read Ted Decker's Black, the forest that Thomas Hunter travels to every time he falls asleep is royally pink. So we are going to create royally pink trees to kind of mimic that part of the book. I'm going to adjust it just a little bit so it's a little more even. And kind of to counteract that pink, I'm going to make everything in Denver much darker green. And I'm going to be changing that to vivid light. It looks like we're going to be masking some of that back out. And we're going to do some clipping masks and changing some lighting. It's going to look really weird here at first, but trust me, it will make sense as we go further. I like to do a lot, a lot with different blending layers. They're really cool. They're super powerful. They make everything work together and I just love them to death. So that's what I've been doing. All the time I'm trying to keep my center brighter than everything around it. I do like darker designs, especially with Ted Decker's Black because it is a darker book. Um, and I do want to kind of articulate that in my design. Um, because Denver is green and the forest is pink, I kind of want to mirror that in the grass that you see. So the bottom under Denver is pink and the top under the trees is green. Just kind of to tie the whole weirdness in because this book is definitely a different kind of book. And I want to kind of communicate 
kind of the strange dreamscape that we get from reading it. Also a big part of the book are um, kind of dark trees and a dark forest. It's a kind of a retelling of the Garden of Eden story. And so I want kind of these witchy looking trees to kind of be growing in from all sides, kind of like thorns and kind of darkness that he, the main character, has to struggle with throughout the book. So we're going to play with those and kind of build those up into the corners there. So they seem to be creeping in. After we're done with that, um, I think we're going to be moving on. Once we get exactly what we want here. I want to start with Ted Decker's name since honestly, it's more important than the title of the book in this case. Ted Decker's a very popular Christian thriller writer. Um, and so his name, the more important the author is, the bigger the name you want it to be. Honestly, there are people, they do not care what the book is. If it's written by Ted Decker, they're buying it. And so you want that to be very clear. I'm trying to mimic a lot of Ted Decker's typography from his other books. For some reason, he does like his second K to be smaller like that. And so this is kind of where I'm going with that to make it look kind of like an official Ted Decker cover. We're going to give his credentials here a little bit of treatment, and then we're going to pull in a quote from a publisher's weekly blurb regarding red, but it's often seen on the cover of black as well, and it really works with the prompt that I was working with. This week's prompt was dream versus reality, which I feel like is perfectly fitting for Ted Decker's black, um, and I think the quote demonstrates that as well as it talks about fantasy and reality. We're now going to work with the actual title, Black. I'm going to pick a very interesting fantasy, kind of whimsical font, and we're going to give it a little bit of treatment here. That honestly, it doesn't look like there's doing much, but it just gives it an extra little pop that is a step beyond just a cool font. We're going to make it glow a little bit, like it's magical. And then I want the background to kind of be seeping through the letters. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I want the light from this kind of weird spirally sky to be glowing through the text. So I'm going to do just tiny little bits of white paint, like it's kind of bleeding out through the text. And then I'm going to do a couple final little tweaks here just to kind of flatten the colors out and blend things to make it look a little nicer. And that is my cover of Black. As you can see on the left, that's the original book cover. On the right is my book cover. Tell me what you think, if it's better or not. Um, and I appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for watching.